Good morning. Good morning. It's a beautiful day. Spring is on the way. I know it. I just know it. Don't give up. I'm holding that in consciousness. Intently. Well, to the end of church. In your program, you will find a slip of paper, a little yellow slip of paper, that um, looks like this. <laughs> looks, looks like this. And if you <coughs> care to fill that out and put it in the offering plate or hand it to the ushers, that way we will know more about you. We can contact you and let you know more about us and what's going on at Unity Church, some of the fun things that we have planned and scheduled. And so now if you all will take just a moment and center yourselves, and we will listen to the Unity song with David Friedman.
like invalids. All right, coming up, March 19th, Reverend Culliver Brooklyn. March 26th, Reverend <coughs> Terry Steinbrink will be here with us. April 2nd, Reverend Karen Bryan will join us and speak to us. And April 9th, again, we will enjoy Reverend Culver Brookman. We are so blessed to have so many and talented and impassioned people that come and speak with us, this church. I'm so thrilled. Today, March the 12th, at 11.15 a.m., $10 per person, we are enjoying the St. Patrick's Day fundraiser that our loving hands have prepared for us. Debbie and Charlene and Marge, corned beef and cabbage, and Irish stew. So please come down if you care to join us and enjoy the wonderful food and special music. And oh, and fellowship, of course, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that is huge. And choir practice for Easter Sunday. You can see the following times. If you have any questions, please see Jane Milder for details. <laughs> Jane is in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, Jane. And if you have any special prayer requests, our powerful prayer chaplain, Charlene Inglis, is here today. And she's available to pray with you after the service. Just let her know whatever your needs are. Also in your program, you will find a prayer request. If you have any prayer needs, please fill that out. You can give it to Charlene, you can give it to one of the ushers, or you can put it in our prayer box here. And we will pray over that for 30 days and then send it to the... Unity Village, and they will continue praying over it. Lots of lots of prayer power. And now, will you join me in singing page two hundred five? Thank you. and 
all I have received. I am grateful. Imaginations in all heaven It's easy if you try No hell in the woods But a sky Imagine all the people Yeah.
we receive <coughs> your prayers and your offerings. And we imagine then going forward, working through our church, our community, our glorious state, and the world. And we thank you. Amen.
I mean, it literally sounds like a 1930s musical. My, 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 my. I mean, it, it gets crazy. And this is, the, this is the fulcrum from which we can recognize that if we are building like we are intended to build, Mother, Father, God made all of us to be creation machines. We are miracle machines. We are constant machines that create and manifest and make everything we want to make, good or bad, be careful with your powers. I mean, truly, not that it's hesitant, but really, truly, we have the ability to usher in and pretty much bring forward anything we want to see in the world. So if we're building our world every day, if we are in the evolutionary cycle of spiritual growth, sociological growth, emotional growth, and we're saying, I can't grow because I don't have time. Well, that means we're not growing, doesn't it? I'll do it tomorrow. I'll grow tomorrow. I'll try tomorrow. Now, my wife owns a boot camp here in town, and sometimes I go, and then sometimes I'm going to go tomorrow. Sometimes I'm going to go tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes and goes, and tomorrow comes and goes, and pretty soon, I haven't built my body. I haven't built my personal intention to better myself. I haven't because it'll come tomorrow. And the problem with tomorrow is that there's always another one, unless it's time to go home, in, in which case, well, okay, there it is. However, if you are here still, you're not done yet, <coughs> which means you are an active contributor to our spiritual, emotional, and social culture. Every single one of us is the body of Mother, Father, God. Every single one of us. And every single one of us has a valuable perspective, especially in this rebuilding time. Now, why would I call it a rebuilding time? Well, we're in the process of kind of knocking it down and rebuilding it. And that is just an evolutionary cycle that, that humans go through. We can look at periods of history where we do this all the time. And a, somebody will rise up and then pretty soon that, that, whomever that is that rose up in the world will have to kind of go, oh, we need to integrate and kind of dial back. And then somebody else rises up and we do this to learn. So if we're building a world on love, what does that mean? I mean, really, what does that mean? That's kind of one of those obtuse things like, have grace, have grace with one another. You know, it's a building your world on love. It means that you are an active participant bringing forward building blocks that edify the greatest strengths of your neighbor, of your family, and of yourself. Now, we're going to talk a little more about that so it's not so obtuse. Love is a verb. You hear me say that a lot. It's a verb. It's an action. If you love someone, you take care of them. If you love someone, sometimes you give them a little feedback when perhaps maybe they're not digging that feedback. But that's what we do when we love somebody. Reciprocation is a form of love. Listening is a form of love. Imagine what the world, imagine, imagine, imagine what the world would be like if we listened a little more and jumped to conclusions a little less. You know, it doesn't matter what religious text we reference, whether it's the Bible, whether it's the Torah, whether it's the Quran, there are all sorts of passages in there about, Amy Ann, don't jump to conclusions, it's a bummer. <laughs> really? I mean, and it's talking about give people a chance to be the people. Give people the benefit <coughs> of the doubt. Now, I'm paraphrasing wildly because we'd be here all day and day if I took every single phrase out of the Bible that had to do <coughs> with being gracious with one another and giving somebody room to be themselves. But if we're building on love, that's what it means. And it means having patience with the self mostly. And that's rough. If we're going to build on love, I mean, what is the foundation of your life? You are. Now, we want to say mother, father, God is the foundation of our life, right? That's what we're taught. People who've gone to Sunday school since we're a little bitty, mother, father, God is the foundation of your life. Well, where is mother, father, God? Here. Here. We are inextricably connected with mother, father, God. So for us to say, my world is going to start from the outside of me, is really not exactly particularly getting a big two arms, a 
around the fact that Mother, Father, God, and all of your miracle potential and everything you have to build is right here. It's right here. It's inside. So if you're building a world with love, the first thing you got to do is love yourself. You've got to love yourself. Then you've got to love your family. You don't have to do anything, but it's recommended. You know, then, then, you, then it's recommended that you try <laughs> loving people who might chap your hide a little. And we hear this in the Bible, love your enemies. And what does that even mean, love your enemies? Well, what it means is, energetically speaking, and here at Unity we deal in a lot of metaphysics, so energetically speaking, if I take the energy of anger and I confront someone with the energy of anger, that anger begets anger. Like attracts like in the spiritual universe. Like attracts like. So love your enemy. How can you have an enemy and love them? Guess what it does to that person that you are in opposition with? It changes their identity. Because if you're my enemy, er, that's actually just a judgment. That's a human being. That's a piece of Mother, Father, God standing right in front of me. And if I decide that person is my enemy, then I am actually in opposition with Mother, Father, God, or a piece of me, perhaps, that I'm in, I'm in a mirror position with. This gets really, like, deep. This goes down the rabbit hole of, oh, oh, but we sprang ahead. Stop talking so much. I mean, really, this is big stuff, because if we're going to build a world on love, that means suspending ego. It means suspending ego. And we have been categorically taught that ego is who we are. Right? We've been taught this. Well, I am. I am Daniel Agnew. Well, this life I appear to be this person, sporting this name, wearing this flesh suit, doing this hair. I mean, I appear to be this person this lifetime. I am a soul that is eternal. You are a soul that is eternal. Mother, Father, God within is eternal. So if I want to just take this little tiny 80 or 90 or 100 year snapshot, best case scenario, <laughs> and I want to take that and decide that this is the wholeness of everything I am is this one little rock skip on the pond of lifetimes. I can do that. Yet I am limiting myself to the possibility of all creation, all lifetimes, all Mother, Father, God, all people, by getting so hung up on me. Now, of course, we're going to get hung up on us. We're people. We're down in these flesh suits to learn specific lessons, to go through the illusion of separation from Mother, Father, God, come back around, realize that that is within and internal, and then we have our little joy spot that we hit. Oh, it's part of our exercise as a human being. Yet what I note, and what you may note, is if I become the ego, that is an exercise in consciousness. And I hop the fence of love, because all of a sudden, my greatest need is to feed the me, rather than embodying the we. Now, here's something that's interesting. I have heard all sorts of people when they hear the message of being able to just Bluetooth in with the embodiment of we, I've heard all sorts of people get really edgy about that. What do you mean? I'm an individual. I've worked really hard for my achievements. What do you mean I'm a we? I don't have a high mind. I'm an individual, independent thinker. Part of the 20th century who's evolving into the 21st. I am me. Awesome. <laughs> That's great. Now that you've decided you're you, what are you going to do with yourself? I don't know, but I'm me! <laughs> when we settle too much in the me consciousness, we forget that our greatest strength is the Bluetooth <clears throat> capability of humanity, is the connection of Mother, Father, God within. This is what enables us to love our enemy. And see my finger quotes? Because I don't believe anyone is my enemy, ever. Ever. If somebody else wants to put me in an enemy position, that's fine. No one is my enemy. Everyone is my family. Even people who may not like me, even people who would look at me and say, oh, don't you put me in your family group. <laughs> you mean Dolly Parton way pull through a hedge backwards? No. Uh. <laughs> okay. But I have no enemies. Because I understand that each one of us is a walking, breathing gift to this world. Each 
one of us is a piece of Mother, Father, God. Each one of us embodies perfect love. And yeah, I might have my rough patches, and you might have your rough patches, and your kids, and your family, or your spouse may have their rough patches. But since we are eternal, is that rough patch who we are forever? No. It's a learning exercise. Mother, Father, God is nothing but love and acceptance. In the million and fifty thousand tries, cool, awesome, oh, try again, you got this. You didn't like what you did, well, try again. We think God doesn't, doesn't approve. Mother, Father, God's just hanging out, being happy that we're even just doing our thing down here. We don't approve of each other. We don't approve of ourselves. We judge the self. That is not the position of Mother, Father, God. That is not the position of love. So when we're talking about building your world on love, that calls us out of ego. And it calls us to connection. And human beings, i got some news for you today. We are built as a species to connect. It is our greatest superhero spiritual strength is connection. It's our greatest superhero strength. <clears throat> and when we fall into these us against them traps, and they are traps, and they are put out there specifically so that folks will not connect, so that the great power and healing aptitudes of humanity are not put online to their fullest potential, they are put out there this us against them, so that folks who are in a fear consciousness have an easier time maneuvering people and controlling people, because we're not, we're not angry. Think about it. How many people wake up in the morning? I mean, the first thing out of bed before, where's my glass of water or where's the bathroom? The first thing out of bed, the minute your eyes open, how many of you are just seedingly angry the, first, the very first time you wake up? You know? Maybe maybe because you had to work, wake up an hour early today. However, <laughs> most of us are not seemingly angry when we wake up. You know why? Because the consciousness takes time to ramp into anger. It takes time to ramp into opinion. You don't just wake up furious. I mean, you at least have to do something. Stub your toe, read the newspaper. Something has to happen. Get a cranky phone call. Get, so there's got to be some externalized something that comes in to inspire that mood. You know why? Because you wake up peaceful. You wake up peaceful. Because that is the nature of spirit. That is the nature of spirit. It's like the, I always say this, babies don't come into the world angry. They don't come into the world hating everybody. They come in peaceful. So if we're building a world on love, we benefit from having the courage to not freak out that we're somehow losing our identity if we love our enemy, if we extend kindness towards someone. Or greater than that, loving your enemy means making sure no one in your mind is your enemy. And that might call into account some of your personal identities. Some of our identities are really based in who we are against. I mean, really, truly especially coming out of the 20th century, which was a very polarizing time frame. Who are you not? Look at the Super Bowl. Which team are you for? You know, God, even our political system, which team are you for? I feel like it's the Super Bowl that never ends and nobody's giving me any free wings here. This is just bad. So it's just, you know, there's a need here to integrate... It doesn't mean we have to agree with everybody, but the integration of the spirit is building the world on love. The minute we take out making someone our enemy, the minute we take out judging the self so harshly that we judge everyone three times as harshly as we judge ourselves, the minute we take out the need to have ego supersede the fact that human beings are just made to Bluetooth, what are we doing? We're sitting in peace. We're sitting in consensus. We're sitting in a moment where we can actually come together and bring through messages that are great for everyone, <coughs> modalities that help others. We are in an awakening period right now where all of this old world modality 
it's kind of shaken off because it's just not really working out really well in an interconnected world. Have your opinions. Be yourself. Exercise. The, dress up your flesh suit you're wearing this lifetime. <clears throat> Yet understand that this is only one tiny aspect of you. If we make everything about me and who I am in this life, we then miss the greater point that building the world on love means being fearless in trusting other people. It means being fearless and being vulnerable <coughs> to the needs of others. And quite frankly, that takes courage. It does not take as much courage to shut ourselves down. It does not take as much courage spiritually, intellectually, or emotionally to decide that someone's against me. That's easy. Because I never have to put any effort towards that person. Well, guess what? If we're all connected and that's all Mother, Father, God, and I'm not putting effort there, who is that hurting? Me. And obviously there's people out there, they don't really necessarily want to interface with us. We don't have to go give every single person we know a hug. That's fine. We can respect boundaries. We don't want to be creepy. <laughs> However, the nature of spirit, the nature of spirit is to connect. So look for the good in folks. Jesus Christ wandered around the desert looking for the good in people. And that freaked a lot of people out because Jesus was getting a heck of a following doing this. Jesus was basically racking up rock star status back in the day before Twitter or Facebook or Instagram by word of mouth alone in a very sparse area. So think about this. How is this happening? Because people could feel that connection. People wanted to be around ultimate love. Jesus Christ wandered about trying to explain to everybody, stop looking for God over here. I mean, Jesus wasn't quite that polarizing, but I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> you don't need to be looking for this thing out here. You got it right here. <coughs> You're carrying the spirit of God within you. And what is the spirit of God? It's love. You're carrying <coughs> ultimate love. You're carrying the ultimate ingredients for manifestation. You are carrying the ultimate ingredients for miracles. You are carrying the ultimate ingredients for healing. Right here. You don't have to go and, you know, turn in a circle six ways and bring up, because back in the day, there was a lot in the particular Jewish tradition of the day. They took a lot of respect into the temples. And they felt that the rabbis, the teachers, were the ones to interface directly with God and then come back and translate. Which actually is a spiritual gift, the gift of translation, the gift of divination. And so here's Jesus, who was a Jewish man, running around going, I know that's how I was raised and everything, but I figured this thing out that's called ultimate connection. Not to say don't go to the priest or don't go to the rabbi, yet also access the God within. <coughs> Jesus says, I am not here to change all the rules, but to amend them. So not here to erase everything, just, guys, added information. Who likes to learn here? I'm a learner. I love when I get new information. Now, sometimes new information comes in, and it challenges the old information. It challenges the ego structure of the old information. And words matter. Our words matter. We throw them around, and then we want to go back and say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. How about we just don't go there half the time? How about exercising some temperance? Will that kill us? It'll kill our ego, because our ego is taught, no, I need to say everything. I need to make my point known. Obviously, there's a time and place for us to speak up, to defend ourselves. Yet when our lifetime, when our lifetime becomes talking more than we're listening, we are out of sync with our greatest potential to receive from Mother, Father, God. So here's Jesus going around, and Jesus did a lot of listening. A lot of listening. Now, we don't hear about that in the Bible because it would just be blank page, blank page, blank page, blank page. That'd be weird. Jesus, the Christ, did a lot of listening. And Jesus would go and channel his information and give his speech and then listen to what people had to say about how it impacted them. And listen to the children. And listen to the women at the time, which was unheard of. Listen to the people who were lesser than. 
was kind of almost everybody who didn't work in a holy field back then. Do you see where we're going with today's mores? Can you see the old here? Look how polarized the world wants to get. You're either holy or you're not. You're either sanctified or you're not. You're with this team that is righteous or you're not. Those are all illusions. We are the body of Mother, Father, God, every single one of us. To build the world on love means to listen. Jesus the Christ knew this. Jesus listened a lot. And Jesus talked a lot about how to find those dynamics of Mother, Father, God. A lot. A lot. I'm busting out the book. Luke 17, 20, which is one of my favorite passages in the whole book. Sincerely. And this is Jesus talking. I know that because the words are red. <laughs> and it says, The kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed. The kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed. So you're not going to find it out here. Okay? Nor will they say, Look, here's the kingdom of God. Or, there it is. Oh, there's the kingdom of God. This modality is righteous. That modality is righteous. This religion is correct. That religion is correct. No. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Or in your midst. Okay? In your midst. You know, the Greek word for within, in your midst, I love this, is entos. Entos. What does that sound like? Ento. Enter. So the Greek word for midst is entos, enter. And so really, literally, here's Jesus saying, the kingdom of God's entrance is right here. You're not going to find it over there. The kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed, nor will they say, look, here it is, or there it is, or pick a side, or pick a team. <clears throat> That's not in there, but. <laughs> the kingdom of God is within you. It's in your midst. Enter. Enter it through you. Follow your instincts. Your instincts, gang, are to love people. That is your instinct. We must be taught how to untrust. We must be taught to be angry. We must be taught to polarize. We want to love people. How many people get their feelings hurt if they feel like they're not loved back? Yeah. Because that's our nature. It's no more than the, a little kid who gets upset if we're playing ball and you don't throw me the ball back. I'm like, whoa, whoa why wouldn't you throw it back to me? I'm worthy. You know, it's just we are a reciprocal race. And, of course, my other job is helping with the future, helping people on their path in that manner. And so I have a particular kink for revelations in the Bible. And it's interesting because Revelation 17, 17, and I'm a, newer, I'm a number person, I'm like, wait, Luke 17, 20, which technically the piece I, that was the kingdom of God is within you is around 17, 17. So here's Revelation 17, 17. <laughs> and it says, for God has put, for God has put it into their hearts to carry out his plan by having purpose and to give the kingdom to the beasts until God's words are accomplished. So the beast, what is that? It's an, it's an analogy, in my opinion, in Revelation, for things that overtake us. And what is that saying? That is basically saying that right now, if we were to be a biblical literalist, which I am not, but if I were, whenever that would be, what this is saying is, I mean, literally, it's asking everybody to get on board with one purpose while the whole world does what it's going to do until the one purpose comes back and establishes itself. And the one purpose is love. The one purpose is love. And look at our world right now. We're, we have all kinds of consciousness experiences, experiments and these experiences where we're trying out being unloving. We're trying out being fearful. We're trying out having hatred instead of love. All over the world. And look how many of us are, are going, ooh, I don't know that that operating system or lesson is for me. I'm going to go over here to love camp. <laughs> Who's more interested in the love camp? <laughs> yeah, yes. And I read this, and I'm like, for God has put it into their hearts to carry out his plan by having one purpose 
and to give their kingdom to the beast until God's words are accomplished. I'm like, wow. Maybe what that means, just maybe, I'm certainly not the great biblical interpreter of the universe, but maybe what that means is, look at the time frame we're in. One purpose, one love. Build the world on love. Build the world on love. The world's going to do what it's going to do. People's lessons are what they are. Let them be that way. Don't make them into your enemy. Why are they your enemy? They're learning. Have you ever learned through fear? Anyone? Uh-huh. Anybody ever learn through pain or hubris? Yes. Anybody ever learn through being vehemently full of ego towards another person? Probably. So if we witness this in others, how about giving those folks some compassion? I don't know about you, but I still have particular road rash on me spiritually from some of these lessons. <laughs> they were a little rough, okay? So how about we exhibit some compassion to those who are in this space? as we build our world in love. That challenges our identity. You see that? One purpose. Let the world gonna do what it's gonna do, and then let the love flood the world. And where does the love come from? Where does Mother, Father, God come from? You. You. Here's a wild outside the box thought. What if the second coming of Christ is just everybody being cool to one another finally? What about that? And flooding the world with peace and kindness. Imagine. Imagine. We're going to imagine right now. I want everybody to just go ahead and just relax. And just close your eyes. Place your hands in your lap or wherever they're comfortable. And just take a breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. And as you're breathing easily, feeling the palms of your hands warming with this beautiful white light. And as the palms of your hands begin to warm, you note that you are gently floating just outside the atmosphere of the earth. And you're looking down and there's this beautiful, quiet orb. And you can see it turning below you. And it's still. And you're above all the satellites. And you're above all the cell phones. And you're just Bluetooth with the universe. And recognize that the peace is a permanent fixture within you that oftentimes you're distracted from with the noise of life. And you gently turn your hands toward the earth, your palms forward, and your hands begin to glow bright and white, and they extend from one hand to the other, and this white light just starts flooding as far as the eye can see, all around the perimeter of the earth. And as we float, we look around and we start seeing our friends and our family. There's a family member over there, there's a pal over there, our spouse is over there, and they're all floating and they all have their hands towards the earth. And this beautiful white light is coming from their hands and we're smiling at them because we're realizing they are doing the exact same thing that we're doing. And the more we put the light forward, the light connects with other people's light and pretty soon we're noticing there are hundreds of people floating and plenty of space for all. And thousands of people floating and plenty of space for all. And this white blanket becomes bigger and bigger, and bigger, and we feel that white energy rolling through our bodies and it gives us goosebumps because we realize that we are not alone in enveloping the world in this white light. Then there are millions of us smiling at one another, all with plenty of room around the world, smiling, different faces, different cultures, 
different needs, different awarenesses. Just smiling to be in this place of peace, connecting the world in this white blanket of light. And this is when we recognize that we are directing the energy of Mother, Father, God to one another. We are wrapping the world in this white blanket, this hug. We are recognizing that we are the body of creation. We feel that white light coming from the chest, down the arms, through the hands. We feel the excitement and the peace and the relief of the millions around the world who see us as their brother, their sister, their family member. And we breathe out, recognizing that the illusion of being separate the illusion of being alone, the illusion of separation from Mother, Father, God is diminished and vanishes. For this is the reality of the human species, the evolution building the foundation of love. You feel that blanket of white and you leave it there, this beautiful white mantle around the earth, you rest your hands, and you allow your spirit to fall back into the body, the beautiful vehicle that you were given in order for you to move forward in your life. It's just a machine. We settle back into the body, feel our body in the seat, we take with us the experience of connecting to all of the world. We draw to us a oneness. We feel our fingers, we wiggle our toes. We carry with us that experience which is real. And we let our eyes open. That is building the world on love. That is the oneness of spirit. You go forward in this week, and you remember what you are. Walking, talking, miracle machines connected with love and kindness. Blessings. Okay.